Let's take a moment and look at some example molecules and see if we can identify what intermolecular forces these molecules experience. Let's take methane, chloromethane, and ammonia. Methane with CH4 is a tetrahedral shape, sp3 hybridization, and because it's symmetric, it's not polar. It has hydrogen in it, but it doesn't have any of the NH, OH, or FH bonds required for hydrogen bonding. So there's no hydrogen bonding in CH4. There's no dipole-dipole attraction in CH4 because it's not polar. But CH4 does have electrons, so it does experience London dispersion forces. Chloromethane is polar. The asymmetry around this tetrahedral shape will now lead to a dipole. There is no hydrogen bonding still, no NH, OH, or FH bond, but this will experience a dipole-dipole attraction. And this has electrons in it, so it can experience London dispersion forces. So regular methane just has London dispersion forces. Chloromethane has London dispersion forces and dipole-dipole attractions. Ammonia would have all three. Ammonia, with its trigonal pyramid shape, is a polar molecule. The lone pair on the nitrogen creates a dipole. Ammonia also experiences hydrogen bonding because it has three separate NH bonds. And ammonia has electrons in it, so it can experience London dispersion forces. Everything can experience London dispersion forces. All you need are electrons. So ammonia has the strongest intermolecular forces of these three. Methane has the weakest. And this will lead to various properties that we can measure in the substances. For example, surface tension is caused by the cohesion of water molecules. Water molecules are very cohesive because of their strong intermolecular forces. When you look at the meniscus in a graduated cylinder in a test tube, you're not only seeing the cohesion of a liquid, you're also seeing adhesion as the water molecules will stick to the side of the glass. This is why if you look at a mercury cylinder, the meniscus is actually going in the different direction. Mercury is tremendously cohesive. The metallic bonding that it experiences hold the atoms together very tightly, but it's not adhesive, so it doesn't stick to the glass at all. So you actually end up getting a reverse meniscus here. This leads to things like capillary action that allows water to go up capillaries. So the xylem in trees or the capillaries in your blood are all caused by the adhesion and cohesion of water. This can also make certain liquids really viscous. When we talk about viscosity, we mean things are really thick and gooey and slow to move. This is a picture of the Boston molasses flood that happened about 100 years ago. In fact, I think 102 years ago, almost to the day. Molasses is such a gooey, thick liquid because it has very strong intermolecular forces. The particles hold on to each other very strongly, so the molecules are very resistant to flow. You can also talk about evaporation and boiling in terms of intermolecular forces. If you're to look at an alcohol like methanol, or a larger alcohol like ethanol. This right here is a ketone. You know this as acetone or nail polish remover. And then we have water. Methanol has hydrogen bonding. Ethanol also has hydrogen bonding. But because ethanol is a larger molecule than methanol, it's harder for ethanol to evaporate. It has a larger mass and stronger dispersion forces. So methanol will evaporate faster than ethanol. Acetone, though polar, doesn't have any hydrogen bonding in it. There are O's and H's in the molecule, but they're not bonded to each other. So acetone's intermolecular forces are weaker than the two alcohols. So acetone will evaporate much faster than the two alcohols. Water has two hydrogen bonding sites. It has two separate OH bonds. So even though it's the smallest molecule of the four, it has the strongest intermolecular forces, so it evaporates the slowest. So if we were to look at the vapor pressure, the pressure caused by the evaporating liquid, the acetone would evaporate the fastest and have the largest vapor pressure. The methanol would be second, with the second highest vapor pressure. The ethanol would be third, with the third highest vapor pressure. And water would be last, because it has such strong intermolecular forces. And we know that evaporation relates to boiling. The easier it is for something to evaporate, the easier it will to boil. So acetone has the lowest boiling point of these because it has the weakest intermolecular forces. Methanol and ethanol would be next, and water would have the highest boiling point because it has such strong intermolecular forces.